Good evening, everyone, and welcome back. Thank you for joining in. I, Dr. Gaurav Babale, along with Ms. Rekha and Ms. Tanvi Desai, welcome you on behalf of entire MASH team. Today, we bring to you our first session of our new campaign on Omicron COVID-19 3.0. We thank the entire marketing team of Yashoda Hospital, Sikandarabad, especially Ms. Namrata and Dr. Gopi Krishna, who made this possible to uh, conduct this uh, particular session today. It has been over a year and a half since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. A huge population across the world got infected by the virus. With abundantly available vaccine for adults, it was safer to plan return to normalcy. And then we had the news of Omicron. The Omicron variant of COVID-19 has been called a variant of concern by WHO based on the evidence that it has several mutations that may have an impact on how it behaves. There is still substantial uncertainty regarding Omicron and a lot of research underway to evaluate its transmissibility, severity and reinfection risk. But the good news is vaccination eligibility now starts at the age of 15 years and a precaution dose is also being administered to senior citizens, healthcare workers and frontline workers who have completed nine months post the second dose. Let us understand more on this variant uh, from our subject matter expert, Dr. Gopi Krishna. Dr. Gopi Krishna is a consultant interventional pulmonologist at Yashoda Hospital, Sikandrabad. He did his MBBS from Siddhartha Medical College, Vijaywada, MD in pulmonary medicine from Mamta Medical College, Khammam. He joined JIP MER Pondicherry as senior resident and worked for three years acquiring knowledge and practicing basic pulmonology as well as interventional pulmonology. Later, he underwent specialty training for thoracoscopy techniques at France and interventional pulmonology at Italy. He has completed an advanced certificated course in sleep medicine at Mumbai. His area of expertise include, but not limited to adult and pediatric bronchoscopies, asthma and allergy, interstitial lung disease, lung cancer, smoking cessation, sleep medicine, rigid bronchoscopy, uh, diagnostic and therapeutic both. That, in other words, means we are truly in safe and experienced sense today. He is also known for treating with a smile. The session will be of around 45 minutes and post the session forum shall be open for question and answers. Please, not, uh, please do not share personal health reports or ask for individualistic consultation on the forum. If you are working from home, you can surely join with your family. Welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us. You can start the session now. Uh, thank you, Gaurav. So uh, today's topic is on Omicron. Uh, right now, I think it is uh, roaring across all the countries, especially in India, there is a rise in uh, the number of cases of Omicron. So we are seeing that globally Omicron is rising very much, especially in the Americas, the Europe, as well as in Asia, especially in India. We are seeing, you know, most of the cases are from uh, Rajasthan and uh, Maharashtra. So the current global situation of COVID cases we can see on the screen, you know, they have been rising. Uh, from 25th December, surprising, right? From 25th December, and it has been rising. The number of cases have been increasing. Of course, the number of deaths are a little lesser when compared to the uh, when we had a wave. So the total number of cases are uh, slowly increasing across the world. So we can see that Europe is topping the list, followed by Americas. And I think America and Europe are almost uh, having the same number of cases. And then comes India, actually. So here in this graph, we are able to see that, you know, United States had a couple of small waves and then a big wave, which is happening right now in United States, lots of cases uh, in uh, America. And, uh, you know, it is very uh, in a pathetic condition, uh, sorry to say, being such a developed country there, the, the waiting time for testing for an RTP sir is 12 hours and the reporting time is four days. So the question of admissions, the question of treatment, all these things are questionable, really questionable. So lots of uh, you know friends, family, relatives, doctors, we know they are suffering a lot with uh, COVID-19 in the United States. And uh, whereas contradictorily, we can say that in India, we are at a much better state you know, where the reporting is faster, we get the reports really fast, and uh, we have availability of you know, the antibody cocktail, the drugs are sufficient enough, the beds are sufficiently, you know, placed by the government. So we are at a much better position than compared to United States. And also to say that, you know, in India, the vaccination percentage is much, much higher than United States of America. So, but what we can see is that in the current graph, which is seen in the screen, we can see that there is a slight rise in trend and rising uh, the number of cases 
in India too, off late since last one week, probably from Christmas to New Year and probably the mixing and gathering up has started a new way for us. So how this is going to you know, travel, we really don't know. Looks like uh, uh, most probably a third wave might set in by the end of this month. So we are seeing that uh, the top two countries to have the cases are like United States of America followed by India only. So where we can see that 59 lakh cases are there in United States and now 35 lakh cases in, uh, in India followed by Brazil. So the other thing, uh, we can say that the number of cases in India about Omicron are like topped by the Maharashtra, like 1,247 cases, Rajasthan 600, Delhi 546. I can see that, you know, Telangana is in the bottom, like around 120 cases around of Omicron. So we have to wait and see how these cases, you know, how fast it spreads and how much, you know, uh, trouble it can cause to the, you know, human life in India. So coming to, you know, what is this Omicron and why, how the, the people have identified this uh, particular virus. So WHO has a technical advisory group uh, on uh, COVID-19 and uh, especially, you know, what they do is a group of experts, they keep they periodically monitor the, the spread of the disease as well as the virus in all different parts of the world. And then they check and see if there is any change in the, you know, the virus structure the presentation and how it affects. So they see for the mutations, they are called the change in the structure of the, you know, the uh, virus is called a mutation. And these mutation, when they, you know, have different uh, change in the structure, like in the outer layer, the inside the RNA or the DNA, these, when they change, so they have a different presentation as well as a different, uh, you know, effect on the human body. So that's how they check the behavior of the virus. So initially around uh, November 2021, 24th end of November, they could identify there was a new variant with B11529. There is a number given uh, by WHO from South Africa, and now it is called Omicron actually. So this variant has a lot of mutations in the spike proteins. So COVID has, uh, you know, is like a ball-like structure with uh, some spikes on it. So these uh, spikes are the ones which uh, enable the COVID virus to lodge onto the white blood cells of uh, human beings. So these spike proteins are little changed, especially uh, in Omicron, almost like 30 plus uh, variations are seen, making it you know, more uh, a little, uh, what you call transmissible means it can spread easily and uh, can cause more damage in people with lower immunity. And also that, you know, it uh, can break the barriers of immunity like secondary to vaccination, as well as secondary to the immunity, which we develop after acquiring COVID. All these things can be surpassed by this uh, new virus called B11529 or Omicron. So what are basically these mutations here in this pictographic uh, representation, you can see that the virus has some uh, spike-like things and these are called spike proteins. And there are some changes which happen in these spike protein that alter the structure so that the penetration of this virus into the white blood cells is much easier and it can spread really fast. And also, uh, you know, it can be acquired, you know, even with shortest exposure to a particular individual. That's the speciality of Omicron. That's the reason the number of cases are going to be huge this time, but the severity might be a little low is what, uh, you know, uh, we can see uh, from the data given away from uh, Europe and uh, United States of America, stating that the people with Omicron are faring a little better when compared to the last variant we had, it is called as Delta. So, which was, uh, you know, which has caused a lot of damage in all the countries, especially in India too. We saw lots of deaths happening because of the Delta variant. So the current, the PCR diagnostics would be sufficient enough to identify this variant. So what happens is whenever we do an RT-PCR, we do some, uh, you know, gene uh, assay or gene typing, or we try to test for the genes. We, say, we try to see for three genes actually, S, E, and N gene or RD, RP gene we say. But in particularly in Omicron, the S gene dropout or S gene will not be identified. So when we do an RT-PCR subjecting for three genes, if there is uh, absence of uh, S gene, uh, you know, it is not detected with S gene, then we have to suspect that this is Omicron. This is the way to identify. And the second way is by genotyping, which is done in the uh, national virology labs, which are set up, you know, in Pune and in Delhi. So they will be doing those uh, testing and they will be let us, letting us know that, you know, uh, that whether it's an Omicron or not. 
so the icmr is still in the way to produce a uh, you know a rapid rt pcr assay where we can identify omicron directly so but not yet launched by the government you know probably you know they are trying to check how efficacious it is whether how how many false positive or false negative reports it can show based on that probably it will be launched into the market very soon so who has designated this as as a variant of concern so i'll explain you what is variant of concern why people are using this word and then they started naming it as omicron there are two things like you know variant of in, uh, interest and variant of concern uh, we can see that you know in uh, variant of interest is yeah there are some changes which is happening in the uh, what you call the virus there are some genetic changes which can occur and which they check for the transmissibility means the spread of the disease and severity of the disease would be checked and immune escape like i said like the omicron also you know can escape the immunity which is being built by the person secondary to covid infection or to the vaccination and also the diagnostic and therapeutic escape we say diagnostic means not conventionally detected by rt pcrs and therapeutic escape means not responding to conventional therapies so these if these characteristics are there in a particular virus then it becomes a variant of interest so when it becomes a variant of concern is when it starts infecting people and when it starts affecting you know uh, people rapidly and causing a severe disease then we call it as variant of concern so omicron has picked up that term like you know variant of concern because of its you know ease, ease of spread and the virulence is little you know severe when compared to the earlier variants and also the yes it can affect uh, you know people who have taken vaccines and also the people who have already got covid yeah we are seeing that in uh, most of the cases right now what we are seeing when we see uh, like the patients walking into the opds they have the symptoms typically of covid like you know the cough cold or little weakness these are the symptoms what we are seeing but uh, when we do an rt pcr they are turning negative this is one point which uh, which we are seeing nowadays that probably this new variant is trying to you know skip the or the diagnostic modalities too so which might be really dangerous because people might be in a false thing like they might not be having covid and the disease can spread really fast so how the variants are named so who has five variants of concerns and eight variants of interest and these numbers keep changing as and when the virus starts mutating and as and when the virus starts changing its structure so they they started naming these after the greek alphabets so they start with alpha beta gamma delta like that okay so according to this the new assigned letter should be something like new then then uh, z but nu is too easily confounded with new new z they don't want to use because it's a surname of you know you know one of the uh, strongest nations like uh, uh, the chinese uh, what you call uh, president's name is z so they don't want to name it as uh, z so they named it as omicron so alpha is the variant which started all the way in september 2020 uh 2020 like in uh, U- united kingdom beta was a new variant was seen in uh, south africa and gamma was seen in brazil the delta is the one which is very famous of all these variants because it started in india in october 2020 and infected whole of the world and caused lots of death one of the most potent and most dangerous virus of covid omicron looks mild right now not sure how it is going to affect when it affects the masses lots of people are getting affected and then how it behaves and how many patients are going to need beds and how severe it can be we really don't know right now the uh, effect of omicron is predominantly in the younger population or the bread earners so most of them are in you know either in middle age or young age so they are faring well so they say that it is a milder variant but not sure when it becomes you know uh, a, a pandemic and when it starts spreading across all the countries and continents and states so this is how they used to name you know alpha beta gamma delta and they then just just they just skipped to omicron uh, which is you know and the third in the line they didn't want to name any other uh, greek alphabets so we can see that uh delta is the one which has affected almost like 99.8% uh, cases are because of delta in most of the countries omicron right now we are seeing that there is a surge of cases 
especially in United States, they call it as they have started naming it as Del Micron because uh, there are two things in this because they both they have both like Delta uh, spike is there like uh, Delta related uh, uh, wave is going on with the super added wave of Omicron both together. So they are trying to name it as Del Micron, not that, you know, uh, Delta and Omicron together, it didn't produce a new virus, not yet. So how the, how the gene, genes are differing in different, uh, you know, uh, what you call a variant of concerns of uh, COVID, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, we can see on the screen, Omicron is entirely different when compared to all the three or four uh, variants which we have seen earlier. So the transmissibility, yes, Omicron is more transmissible. Usually when we get exposed to COVID-19 patient, uh, like unless we are off mask and we are exposed to them for more than 30 to 40 minutes and uh, in close proximity, you know, less than a one meter distance, then there is a chance that we can contact COVID. So whatever is the variant, but now in Omicron, even the slightest interaction of, you know, less than five to 10 minutes and whether, uh, you know, without a mask can easily uh, contract Omicron. That's the reason the transmissibility is way, way higher uh, in Omicron. So there are predictions that almost 98% of people would be affected with Omicron. So being it a milder variant, if almost all 98% people are affected, then there is a chance that people can develop this herd immunity or a group immunity against this COVID and we can put a full stop there to this COVID. This is one of the you know, speculations which are going across in the scientific community. So we have to wait and see whether it is right or wrong. So coming to the severity of the disease, yes, it, is, it can cause a severe infection when compared to Delta, not exactly proven yet, Yes, but the the variant and the, 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 the genetic picture of this Omicron uh, can cause uh, more severe disease when compared to the Delta. So that, that is the one which is scaring people because of its more transmissibility, transmissibility as well as the severity is the one which is bothering them. So regarding the effectiveness of prior SARS-CoV-2 infection, there is an increased risk of reinfection with Omicron. Yes, whether you got Delta or whatever is the variant earlier, if you have that immunity, but still Omicron can bypass that immunity and cause a new infection in people. That's the reason they are saying it can affect 98% people, 98% of the population. Regarding the effectiveness of vaccine, yes, the studies are still going on, but uh, particularly to Omicron, yes, the vaccine related barrier or immunity would be crossed by Omicron. But uh, what they are, uh, you know, the studies are showing that uh, people who are vaccinated are faring well, even if they contract Omicron, they are coming out of the disease, even they contract the severest of the disease, they are making out of it, we even with uh, less or low requirement of oxygen or high, high doses of the medications and all. So vaccines are still playing a vital role, even though they are not able to create a complete barrier to protect us against Omicron. So what are the effective, what is the effectiveness of the current test? Like I said already, yeah, PCR would be sufficient enough, but we need an advanced PCR to identify the, uh, what you call the type of variant. The reason is the treatment would be slightly different when compared to, you know, Omicron and Delta. So whatever these antibody cocktails or remdesivirs we have been using in Delta might not be that effective when compared, when we use it in uh, patients who are affected with Omicron. So that's a controversy which is running across the world right now. So the, the what you call, if we can identify whether if it is Omicron, we can avoid this antibody cocktail, which is available in India, because uh, the antibodies uh, which work against the monoclonal antibodies, which work against Omicron is still not yet launched in India. So, uh, so we can avoid uh, overdosing people if we can identify whether it's Omicron or a Delta. Effectiveness of current treatments, yes. The conventional corticosteroids and IL-6 receptor blockers. Uh, you guys might know toclizumab, which is one of the famous drugs. You know, uh, of course, expensive by you know by the cost given by the company. Not only that, uh, that the, the cost of the company, but it has uh, shot its value uh, uh, when it was required uh, very much in the second wave, where the the drug was sold even for more than you know 10 lakhs, where the actual cost was only 45,000. So those receptor blockers like toclizumab and corticosteroids are working really well in Omicron related patients. That's what the current studies are uh, showing us. So tracking Omicron variant across the globe, we can see a few countries here. 
probably a little older uh, what you call uh, uh, picture but we can see that most of the countries are now yellow almost all the countries uh, across the world are affected with omicron more than 130 countries are affected right now so omicron in uk yes there is a surge shows a bigger wave yes the uk is also suffering with omicron so that's the reason the number of cases are rising very much steeply in london so but still the outcomes are a little better and almost like 80 to 90 percent of icus are full in uh, uh, uk uh, whereas in united states around 75 to 80 percent of icu beds are full uh, because of this mixture of wave of omicron uh, as well as the delta so the omicron tally is rising in india these are little older uh, what you call data that's they're showing only 126 that is very very high now it is something like 4400 cases in india right now so there is a speculation that third wave can likely be in feb yes the whatever uh, studies or speculations are looks like you know the way the cases are uh, coming up in the opds in the last few days especially the last four or five days you know there is a sudden surge what we are able to see that lots of people are coming with positivity and lots of people are coming with milder symptoms actually very less we have seen uh, in our hospital like uh, being the largest in uh, telangana uh, the number of cases getting admitted are lesser uh, but the cases coming for the cocktail are a little higher and people coming for opd consultations are a little higher so there is a slight change in home isolation and care of covid 19 this time uh, the guidelines given by the government as well as icmr asymptomatic contacts like they might be positive just because one of the family member is positive if they don't have any symptoms then their quarantine time is only seven days but symptomatic in individuals will end home isolation at least after seven days or past it, uh, negative testing or and if they are febrile for the last three days and there is a third thing like for medical uh, personnel if they are uh, you know asymptomatic they, then they can join duty by third or fifth day these are the new guidelines which they have given for home isolation. So coming to the vaccines, we all know that uh, two famous vaccines indigenously produced in India, manufactured in India, produced, uh, yes, uh, the Covishield as well as the Covaxin. Uh, Covishield is uh, UK's brain, uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine manufactured in India, uh, and uh, Covaxin is one of indigenous vaccine. Uh, of Bharat Biotech. Now we have a couple of other vaccines too. One is called Corbivax, produced by uh, what you call Biological E. It's a recombinant uh, protein subunit. They say that the efficacy of Corbivax is more than 90% in symptomatic infections, the conventional strains. Even in Delta, the, you know, the efficacy is more than 80%, that it can protect us from the COVID reinfections by 80%. So that's the best part. Whereas our Covaxin and Covishield are somewhere between 60 and 80 percent, I would like to say around 60 to 65 percent. And uh, we have to wait and see. There is another vaccine called Covovax or Novavax, uh, produced by Serum Institute, the same uh, company which has produced uh, Covishield. So it's a it's a nanoparticle vaccine. Uh, this is also having this is also is having you know uh, around 90 percent effectiveness when compared to the conventional vaccines. These are the two new vaccines. There is uh, a fifth vaccine produced by Zydus, uh, mainly manufactured for pediatric age group. So still not yet launched in India, probably because of the, the phase of trials which are still happening across. So that's the reason uh, the government has launched uh, only Covaxin for pediatric age group, or I could, I could say that like from 15 to 18, and uh, hope so that, you know, the vaccination criteria would you know, increase or lessen the age like to from two years to 18 years so that we can prevent this infection getting affected even in pediatric age group. So how should we protect ourselves and our uh, kit and kin? So WHO has given us a few steps. One, first thing is get vaccinated, get your people vaccinated, wear a mask, properly fitted mask covering the nose and mouth. Third, maintain physical distancing. This is the most important one, at least two meters. This is a new thing, what they have given this time, ventilate the indoor spaces. So they were asking us to open the windows and doors so that this time, first time the WHO has given us a, a what you call a specific indication that for Omicron, it would be better if we you know, ventilate the indoor spaces. 
keep a good hygiene you know wash your hands either with the you know sanitizer or soap and self isolate if you have some symptoms this is briefly about omicron i know you guys might be having lots of questions so i just want to keep the talk a little lesser so that we can answer lots of questions so that it would be clear and people would be you know uh, benefited uh, with this talk thank you sir for uh, explaining about omicron in short but giving us all the details about it so we'll move on to the questions now we have many questions which have come up i'll start okay. with the first question to all the participants first of all please uh, do not put individualistic uh, uh, questions with your own reports we will not be able to answer them here because this won't be the right forum uh, for giving uh, consultations here uh, sir so first question is many people are asking uh, what about the booster dose or the precaution dose the government is giving is it safe to give is is it safe to take the, the dose uh, Gaurav, uh, it's a good question uh, i will not say it as booster dose the government wants to name it as a preventive dose so the reason is you know you already got a booster dose the second dose you have taken either covishield or covaxin that's a booster dose this is called a preventive dose uh, the reason would be you know most of the people uh, across all different countries are worried about the disease and some scientists have come up stating that you know an extra dose might help the people who are weak so what do they mean mean that that the statements uh, the statement means that people who have diabetes people who have kidney issues people who have cancers or people who are aged above 65 years or people who are on cancer chemotherapy or people who are having hiv there are some infections or the people who are on you know immunosuppressive therapies those are the people who might get benefited with an extra dose the third dose that's the reason it is called as a preventive dose but it has caught you know uh, it has become viral and everyone including the young people as well as you know the aged everyone wanted a third dose so there, there was no studies which happened about the third third dose uh, so almost all the countries, the governments have left it op open to the citizens so that they can take the third dose by themselves. If they want to mix, they can mix. If they want to take the same vaccine, they can take. No certification, nothing. Just walk in and take a third dose and go home. This is what is happening in US, the Europe, everywhere. So the similar sort of pressure and uh, you know situation happened even in India. So they had to open up for the third dose. That's the reason, but Indian government has given specific guidelines that, you know, stating that this is particularly for people with the frontline workers, as well as the people whose immunity is on the lower side. So this is point one. Second, regarding the efficacy, no one knows the efficacy of third dose. Whether it will work, it will not work, it might benefit, it might not benefit. Yes, some studies are there, which is stating that, yes, this vaccine taking a third dose will not harm the people. That's what the studies show. So this is what we have information. And third point I would like to stress is, yes, some studies have happened on AstraZeneca vaccine. Like people who have taken a couple of AstraZeneca vaccine, if they take the third dose as a Pfizer, they have you know, prolonged immunity and you know, exorbitant immunity, which can boost up in the body and can protect them from uh, future infections. So the AstraZeneca vaccine is nothing but our COVID shield. The point here is, you know, we don't have uh, a Pfizer to take as a third dose. So that point is ruled out in India right now. Thank you, sir. Uh, that, that answers our question in detail. And uh, thank you for clearing that. It is, there has been no study and uh, due to the pressure, it has been opened in other countries. Yes. And our country has taken right decisions uh, considering uh, the senior citizens or weak people or people who are at major risk. Thank you, sir. Sir, moving on to next question. Uh, people would like to know, uh, people who had suffered in the past with COVID, in previous variants, we were not seeing uh, uh, reinfection, but with the Omicron coming in, we have seen many cases of reinfection also. So uh, is Omicron going to affect uh, everybody who has been in the past or people who have uh, suffered from COVID in the past are more vulnerable now, sir? Yeah, uh, you know, your, your question pretty much answers the same uh, Gaurav. Uh, you know uh, this Omicron has special capabilities you know because it has changed its structure it has better penetration uh, capacity into the body so yes it can cross the barrier can affect all the people who got COVID earlier also if your immunity is on the lower side yes you will contract Omicron very easily 
So the there are speculations right now, you know, in the scientific community stating that almost 98% of the population would be affected, whether they might be symptomatic or might not be symptomatic. Okay, so uh, with Omicron. So why it has why it is occurring? Because there is a mutation, there is a change in the structure of this COVID uh, virus. That's the reason uh, the it has it has become intelligent. It has become better so that it can cause uh, a severe disease or it can uh, you know infect the human uh, population very easily. So these things happen very frequently in viruses. It's a it's a it's a pretty common phenomenon. So not only in COVID. Uh, but it happened even earlier, like in 10 years to 12 years back, swine flu. There are lots of variants of swine flu. Slowly, the variants have changed and become, you know, sometimes they became severe and then they slowly started dying down. So the variants will become milder and milder. The more the mutations can be severity initially, but slowly it will become weaker as people will start developing, uh, you know, immunity to fight against the newer mutations and, uh, you know, these newer viruses. So it's a it's a good thing which is happening as per the science. Fine, thank you, sir. Sir, a very basic question: uh, Can you clarify how to identify? Because uh, currently the temperature is uh, cold, and in uh, Mumbai also it is very cold, which generally people in Mumbai don't experience. So okay. now people are getting confused uh, between flu, uh, common cold, and uh, COVID symptoms. So, sir, right. can you help us in uh, like what should be uh, done if we find some symptoms in us? What should be done? Like isolation should be done. When the test should be done? What should we follow? See, uh, because of the climatic variation, lots of people are experiencing, you know, the flu-like sim uh, symptoms, like you know, cough, cold, you know, little uh, stuffiness of nose, you know, sore throat. These are common flu-like, uh, you know, symptoms which we see. But if there are some, uh, you know, common viruses like adenovirus or you know, there's uh, what you call uh, um, rhinovirus, we say, as well as the flu, the swine flu, influenza. These are common viruses, which also can present just like COVID. So, you know, normally the conventional viruses, they die down within two or three days. By third day, most of the times, these symptoms will settle automatically or, you know, or if, if a little uh, support with the uh, paracetamol or some cetrazine or some antihistamine, if you take, then they settle off. But in uh, particularly with COVID, uh, if it is Delta, then usually there will be a progression of symptoms. They usually don't stop. Uh, but we are seeing that, you know, this time with Omicron, the symptoms are milder. It's only hardly a low-grade fever, little body pains for one or two days and a little milder cough and on third or fourth day, it's becoming normal. That's a big uh, situation we are having right now. See, point one, if you are in, if you are in an area uh, where there are more number of cases, get yourself tested. That's the only way out where we can put a full stop for this disease. Not basis of symptoms. Symptoms can deceive you, symptoms can cheat you. If your particular state is having more number of cases of COVID, mandatory, you should get tested. Unlike, you know, in Telangana, we have very less number of cases. So we, uh, you know, there is a little... Uh, relaxation uh, we are getting here like you know we can wait for one or two days but we don't give that relaxation in especially in Maharashtra or Rajasthan or in Delhi you have symptom anything like cough cold get it tested there is no other way tested means RT-PCR not a CT scans or any other tests okay thereby we can limit the number of testings and uh, you know if we can identify if, if we are positive so that we can uh, start treating a little early take precautions isolate ourselves quickly so that we don't uh, spread this disease to our own family. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, regarding to testing, please uh, clarify since like uh, uh, how much should we wait uh, from the first symptom, sir? Like the uh, first symptom has uh, just come up today. So should we get ourselves tested right away or should we wait for two days and then do it? Gaurav, uh, the current scenario of Omicron, na? so there are uh, lots of plus minus which are happening across because no one can answer these particular questions, you know. The reason is Omicron density is more in the throat rather than in the lung. Okay, so even if you start testing on the first day or second day, uh, if your if your lab is trying to test for all three genes, then it is very easy to pick up that you got COVID or Omicron. Okay, COVID or which, whichever variant right now is running. Yes, you can get tested from day two or day three. Earlier we used to stay, say that wait for two three days and fourth day you can go for testing. Now we are not trying to do that because you, we want to restrict or we want to stop the third wave 
so you want to stop the third wave then you should test yourself as early as possible you have strong suspicion that you have gone out you went uh, you know to a mall you went to a party you went to you have traveled to an area where there are more number of covid cases or you you have been you know to in a hospital then ideally i suggest get yourself tested if you have visited these places in the last 7 days even in the first day or second day you can get tested and i am seeing that most of the cases are turning positive on day 2 and day 3 also the reason being you know omicron density is little higher in the upper airways than in the lower airways so this time uh, we are seeing that lots of patients are having mild cough mild cold when we do their ct scans the ct scans are absolutely normal unlike you know the earlier delta variant yeah okay. second or third day would be ideal thank you sir thank you for uh, clarifying that sir moving on to next question on testing only because we have got many questions on that how about rapid antigen test sir or the covi self kit which we were using at home how effective is that currently effectiveness of covi self or whatever you know rapid antigen tests which are being done by the government as well as the you know population by doing themselves you know if it is positive 100% it is positive that it is covid effectiveness of rapid antigen is less than 50% the reason is the rt pcr effectiveness or sensitivity sensitivity is hardly 65% so if you test 100 positive patients the rt pcr turning positive would be only 65 so when compared to uh, rt pcr rapid antigen does only with few you know proteins so the effectiveness would be hardly you know 30 35% so i suggest if the rapid antigen is negative and you have symptoms and there is a history that there was a travel history or you know exposure to uh, public or crowd then i suggest you repeat uh, you know your rt pcr or send the rt pcr on the same day okay so thank you sir so the effectiveness of rapid would be very very less Okay. yes as a precautionary you can get tested if it positive then you can isolate yourself and start you know uh, taking medication too right so uh, in extension to what sir mentioned he also showed the updated icmr guideline in his uh, ppt wherein uh, if your rat that is rapid antigen test if it is positive it is positive if it is negative you uh, and you have symptoms you have to get your rt pcr done so this circular has been shared by icmr so we need to follow that and please update your positive or negative whatever the report is there if you are doing it from self kits please update it on the website which is mentioned on the kit it is mandatory uh, for uh, us to do that so that there is proper amount of sample study which our government does sir moving on to the next question with respect to the answer which you gave for the previous one sir you mentioned that 60 to 65% correct reports or positive reports we get from uh, uh, rt pcr test what about false negative cases sir uh, so for example mm. we have symptoms and we have negative this uh, mm. what what should we be doing sir in that case so for that also you know we have guidelines stating that when we have a strong suspicion it can be a covid your rt pcr on day 1 is negative wait for 3 days and on day 4 or day 5 you have to repeat your rt pcr again okay, so sir. this is what the guidelines suggest when you have a strong suspicion yes it can be covid and your symptoms are not getting better and you know you you by keeping yourself isolated you have to send a repeat rt pcr on day 4 or day 5 so if that is also negative then you can declare yourself that you know yes you are you are not affected with covid okay. that's how uh, the approach is being uh, done right now in most of the you know hospitals because this is the guideline given by the government okay sir as a layman uh, so uh, uh, you mean to say that even if i have symptoms and if my test is negative i should uh, keep I, myself isolated uh, yes. till at least next 4 to 5 days right sir Minimum. that would be Minimum. the right way of having a, a negative rt pcr uh, and to uh, move ahead right sir yes exactly okay sir moving on to the next question how effective are the current vaccines is there any particular vaccine like sputnik uh, covi shield or covaxin or any other vaccine which are available which are more effective uh, to omicron is there any uh, research which has been done no no there is no research right now uh, because see omicron is hardly aged one less you know not even one month so so it is really difficult to talk about vaccine efficacy in relation to omicron we don't have any study stating that you know this vaccine is more effective in omicron cases and this is not 
So vaccine is only a preventive uh, mode where we try to you know protect ourselves when we get affected with COVID. So more, lots of people have false uh, you know uh, perception that you take vaccine and you will not get COVID. Absolutely wrong. You can get COVID if you don't wear a mask. You can get COVID if you don't follow social distancing norms or you know you don't uh, do your uh, routine hand washing and all. What a vaccine does is when you fall sick, it will help you you know fight against the disease effectively so that you don't land up into a dangerous situation or requiring oxygen or you know higher generation ventilations and all so that's what a vaccine uh, of covid does not here across the world whatever is the vaccine you name the vaccine efficacy is that much only they never stop the virus entering into our body okay the the thing which stops the virus is your mask Second thing, coming to your question, we don't have any studies stating that this vaccine is more efficacious. This is not because we don't have studies at all because there's a new virus. We'll be knowing it only after three, four months. Right, sir. So, sir, uh, thank you for clearing that. Uh, so, to all the participants, uh, as sir mentioned, most important piece is again COVID safety behavior and your masking. Right, uh, masking, proper masking is very important. So, sir, uh, let us... Uh, uh, explain our uh, part participants about the right way of masking is cloth masking the uh, correct way of masking or what we should use which is actually uh, economical for our pockets also and is safe for us also uh, there is nothing particular see uh, for all the common citizens we suggest any mask like you know the disposable mask or a cloth mask is fine but the point is, if you use a disposable mask, it would be a little better because we use it and we just throw it off and it's a single time use. So repeated infections or, you know, rebreathing uh, into those masks will not happen. But when you are using a cloth mask, be keep in mind that, you know, uh, you are supposed to wash it every day, every day. Not that, you know, you keep the mask in your pocket and you start using it for five, six, seven, ten days. One of the reasons for, you know, the mucor epidemic which happened in India can be one of the things is about the, you know, reusage of masks, especially the N95s or the cloth masks which have been reused by most of the people who got COVID. The third thing, yeah, N95 is one of the best masks. Yeah, we can use it when we are trying to travel in air or when we are trying to travel in the trains or when we are going into the public or when you're, you know, going into a mall or for shopping your groceries or whatever. I suggest you wear an N95 mask rather than a cloth or a you know, simple mask. So my suggestion personally would be for a conventional usage, simple or disposable or cloth mask would be fine. But if you are trying to uh, travel in a closed area or you are you're, you're planning to you know, attend a meeting in a closed space or closed area, I suggest you use an N95 rather than a conventional cloth mask. So your pocket should have at least a couple of different types of masks in your uh, you know, bag or in the pocket. So depending on the situation, you have to use it. Dispose any mask, dispose it off on the same day. Thank if you. it's a cloth, you get it washed. Right. Uh, sir, uh, we have seen many people uh, who are asking uh, questions regarding washing of N95 mask or washing mm -hmm. surgical mask. Sir, which wa masks are reusable and which masks should not be reused? Can you just uh, clarify on that? And why not to use wall masks? Uh, why, mm -hmm. it, why uh, to avoid these masks? Can you please clarify that? See, valve masks have been stopped, uh, you know, the number of valve mask manufacturing also has come down because uh, in, the, in the era of COVID, they found out, you know, the if, if a person is positive and, you know, if he is breathing out, the viruses can come out through the, you know, valve and can infect. So the purpose of wearing an N95 doesn't serve, you know, uh, so that, you know, preventing not only from the viruses coming into our body, the viruses which are already there in our body should not go out. That's the point of N95. So when you have a valve to an N95, so that purpose is not served. That's the reason they have removed the valve. Most of the uh, masks are now, now not available are not available with the valve, especially very few companies are manufacturing. So for people who have this, you know, phobia towards masks and the people who have claustrophobic effects, most of the people, you know, most of my patients complain that when I wear mask, I feel breathless. So this is more of a, you know psychological thing rather than in a, uh, in a practical way. It doesn't happen like that. So for those people, you know, they can use a valve mask. It might help them. And uh, regarding your first question, Gaurav, nothing to be washed except for your cloth mask. 
okay the n95 or the you know the surgical mask all these masks are to be disposed of they are single use masks why the people have reused uh, you know n95s because when there was a sudden surge of you know epidemic of covid when there was a lockdown all the companies were shut down there were no manufacturing of masks so people were forced even the frontline workers were forced to reuse the masks by sterilizing them all with all and different types of techniques they were trying to show but i personally feel uh, no there is a uh, nothing like you know reusing of n95 mask it's a single disposable mask which you have to you know dispose it of okay sir thank you for clarifying that sir uh, sir moving on to uh, next question regarding uh, treatment protocol sir uh, last time uh, as you mentioned in your ppt also we had uh, seen shortage of remdesivir many people stocking up uh, that particular medicine and there were multiple medicines which were st uh, stocked up like ivermectin uh, in the beginning and then there were chloroquine which were stocked up is there any particular medicine that has actually helped us or has worked as wonder drug or covid treatment has been only symptomatic and has been mostly different uh, depending on the symptom of the patient usually it is uh, as you said uh, you know uh, gaurav like it is mostly symptomatic and depending on the it's a patient ta patient tailored treatment depending on their severity we try to add new drugs or bring into new uh, what you call devices for their treatment absolutely there is no single drug which has proven 100% efficacious that you know with this you will not get covid or you will be cured of covid or you will not fall or you will not uh, you know go, go into a grave situation till now not none of the drugs have proven that hcqs the hydroxychloroquine which was you know hyped by india uh, by the usage you know it can prevent and all it has proven that it is useless ivermectin is useless there is no role of you know doxycyclines or azithromycin you know gulping them because they are antibiotics they have turned useless le, le, there are little studies suggesting that you know little higher doses of vitamin d and zinc and vitamin c are helping people uh, like in an antioxidant effect like it can scavenge the you know free radicals which develop because of covid irritation so that the severity can come down only vitamins have proven little bit yes the the drugs which have proven their role in covid treatment is steroid so in which patients to use not every patient would be given a steroid people who have you know a severe disease in a ct scan people who have blood markers you know the inflammatory markers we say if those values like crp il6 or d dimers are higher then we might need those steroids or people who are requiring oxygen would be given steroids not everyone and last but not least the role of steroid is 35 to 40% in the treatment of covid the role of blood thinner is 20 to 25% the role of tocilizumab or il6 receptor blockers is 10 to 15% the role of remdesivir is less than 10% okay there is no point stocking up remdesivir remdesivir is not a magic drug at all and coming to the novel therapies which come which came up in the last few months we call them as antibody cocktails you know there are a couple of synthetic uh, antibodies which have been manufactured this this is the antibody cocktail which was which was given to trump when he had covid and he recovered really fast after that it got its fame and you know the studies have shown that antibody cocktail really slows down the disease and you know prevents people from landing up onto oxygenation or landing up onto ventilations and also it will reduce the severity of the disease and also it will prevent the death by 78 to 80% so but uh, you know unfortunately these antibody cocktails they do work for you know a few variants of covid like delta and uh, beta but not all the variants and for omicron this antibody cocktail is useless it doesn't help at all there is a different antibody we have to use uh, that is strovomimab which is not available in india right now that's the reason we are little worried so that you know we can identify whether it's an omicron or a delta then we can give an optimized treatment for people rather than over usage of these antibody cocktails too right sir we would like to hear from you like you might be knowing uh, how our government is actually preparing uh, the whole country to uh, actually uh, uh, have a control on this third wave the way we shattered during uh, the second wave so what are the preventive measures our government is taking because that uh, is one optimistic thing which will actually uh, save us and we want to know like uh, are the steps being taken are right and are we on the right track because yeah. that will actually motivate everybody because everybody is scared of this uh, panic sir right now 
right see uh, uh, you know we can say that we can proudly say that you know all the state governments and the central government is geared up uh, by the time uh, the second wave was ending okay so they were uh, you know expecting a third wave that's the reason they have you know pumped up the beds the especially the icu beds and they have new oxygen plants in most of the states you know all the state uh, capitals and also some small towns we have oxygen plants which have uh, you know have come up uh, of late you know more than 2000 3000 oxygen plants have come up uh, and uh, other than that there was oxygen shortage earlier now we don't have we don't have to fear for oxygen the third thing we have sufficient reserves of remdesivir almost like 15 to 16 companies are manufacturing remdesivir and uh, like around you know more than 400 500 companies are manufacturing steroids so most of the drugs are manufactured indigenously only okay so we need not worry about the drug shortage also the third thing uh, regarding the you know gearing up the government is focusing more on vaccination 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 and vaccination this is the only way where we can protect ourselves protect you know even the country's economy also if you get vaccinated the disease can be little, little lesser severe less severe and we can come out of this you know menace really fast and we can start working on our economies also the reason and it is way way cheaper uh, you know uh, to vaccinate than to treat a person uh, who got into a severe covid so this is the only way where we can you know stop the third wave or fourth wave or whatever next waves which are going to come up so vaccination is the only way we can stop this virus that's the reason india tops the list of vaccine the peer countries uh, who got you know vaccinated uh, most of the you know uh, like almost most of the adults have got vaccinated like around 90% people got vaccinated uh, with the first dose and around 60 50 to 60% people got vaccinated with the second dose whereas you know the developed countries like united states and france are still lagging behind like in less than 50% so that's the best part uh, what indian government have, and you know in coordination with all the state governments are trying to do so don't worry about any shortage of the drugs this time it's not going to happen third uh, the the fourth point i would like to say yes if it is going to be a milder variant we might not need all these things so it might affect but it will just wane off and we all can uh, you know uh, get back to the work very faster unlike the delta and all so majority of the chunk not lies with the government but with the population around the country who can prevent themselves and protect themselves by properly you know wearing the mask and uh, following the uh, physical distancing norms okay thank you sir sir uh, now about uh, the preventive measures which we were actually taking in the past and yes. now like how to continue with them so uh, you mentioned about covid appropriate behavior you mentioned about yes. masking also and uh, social distancing all those things we will surely try to follow sir what about steam inhalation uh, and what about uh, any tests and any uh, uh, vitamin supplements which we should take or were taken in the past so now uh, is it again required sir uh, vitamin supplements for the people who are not affected uh, yes sir no no absolutely no not required at all you know we are seeing lots of cases with hypervitaminosis too right. much of vitamins also can cause disease okay so there were people who were gulping you know uh, the you know the vitamin c for last 4 5 months or i have seen a patient who was using vitamin c for last 1 to 2 years he came into the opd stating that you know he started spitting out blood so it's not the blood coming from the lung but from the gums so too much of vitamin c or too much of vitamin d can cause cardiac issues too much of you know vitamin b can cause changes in the liver so there are you know the things which are happening you know uh, which are not proven they are proven for people who got covid who have inflammation in their body who are diseased but not for people who don't have covid you need not worry about it the way you have to prevent is not by gulping the vitamins i suggest you exercise regularly sleep properly maintain a strict diet regime so that your you know body's immunity would be you know appropriately uh, prepared to fight any uh, fight against any infection is my suggestion the other than that uh, you know preparing for the tests and all nothing is required uh, gaurav right now to do any tests unless and until you are symptomatic okay okay sir so when we get symptomatic or we have a positive report but with mild symptoms so that time uh, we should be taking any supplements or we should be contacting our doctor and on the basis of treatment which he suggests that only should be followed or any uh, supplements should be taken 
better would be you know contacting a medical practitioner you know now nowadays you know they are available 24/7 in the hospitals off the hospitals you have you know people who are doing online consults at least you know contact one medical practitioner he might be able to guide you in what way you have to approach basing on the severity so that you don't miss some important things you know uh, not every patient is same and not every patient's covid is same so ideally you know that has to be you know uh, tailor made by the doctor rather than the patient by themselves so i suggest you contact the doctor and start the medication rather than you know starting vitamins or any other drugs by yourself and there is no urgency or you know to start on the same day as soon as you get a report you know you can wait and meet the doctor next day and then get yourself if required some blood test which have to be done then go forward right sir sir uh, so moving on to uh, the new uh, variants there are news of uh, new variants coming in like yes. uh, delta cron which who has not identified but uh, there are some yes. cases reported in cyprus and right. also about fluorona sir how Uh, are uh, so how much to believe this and what should be done sir because uh, even you must be knowing you might be getting these yeah, yeah. questions uh, regular day in day out so yeah, please yeah. let us know yeah, how to handle uh, this i don't know uh, they they are not authenticated results as of now who has not even you know mentioned about them anywhere in their you know uh, what you call research about these uh, new variant of viruses which are coming up Yes, they have mentioned that one new variant has started up uh, with more mutations than uh, Omicron. Omicron is having only thirty mutations. This is having more than forty-five mutations. This is started all the way in France, you know, uh, in Marseille. So the variant is called uh, B one seven four zero something. Okay, they didn't name it mm, yet, so we don't know about that one. But that has been mentioned by WHO. Regarding the fluorona or other things, I'm not sure. i don't want to comment about it unless we have authenticated reports about them sir coming back to uh, vaccination please thank you for clearing that actually yeah. there are many questions which are related to delta cron uh, today almost okay. 25 or more questions were there sir so yeah. i thought of asking this towards then sir uh, still very strangely we are getting uh, questions regarding contraindication of vaccines in india so is there mm-hmm. any contraindication other than age in india for uh, taking vaccination sir absolutely there is no contraindication see even if you are on a blood thinner or even if you are on a steroid even if you are on a cancer chemotherapy you know you can take vaccine the only thing what we have to do is you know if, if you are on a blood thinner or a steroid you need to stop a day prior of vaccine on the day of vaccine and the day next of the vaccine so it's a three days you stop uh, you know steroids or blood thinners on those three days get yourself vaccinated and restart the medication absolutely there is no contraindication for the vaccines which are given in india our vaccines are subunit vaccines they won't cause active disease at all they are not live vaccines so there is no contraindication at all unless and until a patient has some allergic reaction to the ingredients in the vaccine which no one can tell you know it can happen to anyone with any vaccine or any drug okay so that's the reason they have kept a norm that you know uh after you go for a vaccination they are asking you to stay back for 30 minutes and then go that is to prevent hypersensitivity reactions which some people would be having uh for some ingredients in the vaccination preparation per se not because of the covid vaccine or covid uh, particle in the vaccine thank you sir so as sir mentioned uh, in the previous uh, answers that uh, va- vaccinating is the cheapest and the easiest way of uh, avoiding covid Uh, other than anything it is very difficult to treat a covid patient than to uh, vaccinate so please please uh, get yourself vaccinated there is no contraindication other than age anybody above the age of 15 should get themselves vaccinated fully vaccinated that is at least two doses of vaccine so Even please pregnancy also pregnancy yes, breastfeeding pregnancy, lactation right sir infertility everyone can get vaccinated right right thank you sir so sir moving on to next question sir we would like to uh, like you to suggest on diet plan or something which we, which will actually keep us healthy or save us from okay. omicron okay not omicron any disease you know uh, proper strict sleep schedule is the one which will help us you know a proper uh, sleep of 6 to 7 hours first point i would like to talk about is that second yes in regards to diet a high protein diet might help us out you know if you are a vegetarian or a negative you know uh, vegetarian at least a couple of eggs can be taken 
and if you are a non vegetarian probably include uh, you know whatever uh, form of uh, meat you want to take at least weekly twice or thrice and other than that you know uh, regular on a regular basis you can take milk and uh, this either the dry fruits or the peanuts or the rajma the boiled chana all these things will have high protein you know a small cup of them in the evening you know can help you out you know protecting yourself from uh, any type of viral infection or a bacterial infection other than that a 45 minutes brisk walk or an exercise will definitely help us you know in uh, boosting our immunity and uh, protecting ourselves so that we can fight against any infection these are three things diet exercise and sleep are very very important okay. sir uh, yes there is a, a one more area which we didn't uh, touch upon and that was okay. the last thing which we wanted to do today sir can you help us in guiding preventing our children because uh in the past it was said that uh, uh, children below 5 years don't require masks but uh, recently in few newspapers it had come on the government website also it says 2 to 5 years uh, children should wear mask in uh, presence of adults only and uh, uh, can you just uh, help us how omicron is affecting children and what precaution we should be taking for them to yeah yeah as you said garo uh, particularly we don't have any particular data stating that you know omicron affecting kids and all Uh, very few uh, case reports have come up you know uh, in uh, a few countries like in singapore japan and in few countries of europe that kids were affected but it was really really mild with them and uh, the second to the second thing for your question like you know wearing a mask yes even the kids have to get uh, you know wear a proper mask for themselves we have to train them teach them you know in proper way that that they are you know masked you know most of the times so that they don't contract the disease from the adults so that you know uh, we can reduce the uh, the disease load in the pediatric age group so wearing a mask is mandatory at least a, a simple cloth mask would be you know very easy for us to acquire and uh, use it for the kids it is mandatory that we should teach them using the mask as well as hand sanitizer thank you sir sir uh, i will take two more questions and with that we'll end the session sir uh, in the previous uh, uh we we had actually followed that we will get groceries and keep it outside for say 2 hours 3 hours or we were doing steam inhalation uh, twice a day there were many things which were being done so what is your opinion what should we do with the groceries or things which come out from come from outside or the parcels that are coming from online shopping what should be done what precaution needs to be taken on that uh actually we you know of late you know most of the studies are showing that you know the contact with fomites fomites means it can be groceries it can be the mouse or keypad or the table or the pen or a mobile so contact through the fomites is very very less with covid okay don't worry about that and i suggest if you can keep in a sunlight would be fine you know if you can keep it for you know 10 15 minutes in sunlight that should be fine rather than you know spraying or sprinkling of what you call uh, sanitizers over the groceries is not required or on the vegetables second uh, regarding steam inhalation no absolutely it's a wrong concept that steam will prevent the disease or steam will kill the virus absolutely wrong we saw lots of people coming into the opd with burns of steam in the nose and throat you know we had tough time in treating them because they are having persistent cough and all which will not go away for 3 to 6 weeks because of the steam burns so i suggest the steam should be used for people who have nose block and who have sinusitis they are the people who should be using the steam not that you know as a preventive mode or a prophylactic mode we are not supposed to use steam inhalation at all thank you sir sir so uh, that was all from our side i can see 370 unanswered questions in the q and a box which cannot be taken many of them are repetitive we have tried to actually take up all the basic uh questions which can be taken up there were some questions which were related to research we uh, don't think uh, uh, this is the right forum to uh, discuss on research this is more on enlightening uh, the general population uh, and we have uh, tried to do that sir can you just give us one mantra from your side that will actually help us sail through this wave also successfully and together to save do you know to save ourselves and everyone it is we i i we named it as social vaccination uh, gaurav social vaccination is nothing but the same thing i am repeating again a proper well fitted mask proper hand sanitization and social distancing these are the only three things addition to that you know 
vaccination vaccination of everyone in the family will definitely help us you know get out of this disease not this wave or this omicron but you know get out of covid whatever waves which come in future these are the you know three four things which we have to keep in mind thank so, you sir yeah so uh, honestly uh, on behalf of march this has been one of the most optimistic sessions uh, which i have conducted uh, on uh, covid sir has clearly mentioned that see we don't have to do anything new we just have to stick to our basics we just have to get ourselves vaccinated not even wait for booster dose we just have to get ourselves completely vaccinated booster or precaution dose whatever it is but sir has mentioned that your two doses are uh, enough for you currently secondly please stick to the masking piece third thing he mentioned that please do not self medicate we have people uh, landing into hypervitaminosis excessive use of steroids led to uh, multiple diseases multiple complications which we don't want we don't want you people to uh, go into self diagnostic mode also please don't get yourself tested uh, for any other things like b dimer or anything let your doctor decide they have spent a lot of time studying about it they have spent a lot of time in researching about what suits the best and most importantly sir said that that the treatment is symptomatic please do not uh, store or uh, uh, start keeping any medicine or anything with us just in case we need it in future that will not be required May, the uh, other optimistic part of this session was that uh, many people are uh, getting treated easily the signs and symptoms which we are seeing are mild and can be cured what we need to do is we just have to take care and avoid spreading this uh, stay aware uh, other uh, positive news was that that we have uh, the vaccination which is now extended uh, to 15 to 18 age group also we also have uh, the precaution dose for healthcare workers frontline workers and also for senior citizens who have completed 9 months so please if you are eligible for that and if you want please contact your doctor and then uh, at his suggestion please go for whatever you are eligible for but if you have not taken the vaccine please do it there is no contraindication other than age for vaccination in india all the vaccines which are available are safe and uh, should be taken in time thank you sir for the wonderful session and we really uh, appreciate your time uh, you have actually given a lot of time uh, to us and you have shortened your speech today and taken questions for more than 40 minutes uh, so we really appreciate that thank you sir uh, uh, we will be conducting more sessions on this and uh, we will be having a special session on children uh, and omicron in the next week that is on 18th so uh, please uh, join we will be having a pediatrician also speaking on that so to all the participants please join that session too please put in your feedbacks in the chat box and uh, uh, also participate in the poll thank uh, poll thank you sir yeah thank you very much